Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the VTCT Functional Skills Webinar. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, we are now moving into a partnership with Skills First to produce our functional skills. So we are trying to minimise any disruption or any change to yourselves. Um, but we've got Lisa from Skills First with us today who's going to take you through the things that she thinks are the most important for you to know moving forward and this hopefully will help you moving forward with logging on and actually taking your tests. If you want to type any questions in at any time, if it's relevant at that time, we'll answer it. If not, we'll make sure we answer everything at the end. The other thing I will say to you as well, just to be thinking about throughout the webinar or any other webinars or training that you think you might need, um, having a look through what you've learned today or anything that you might need any further help or support with in order that we can facilitate that for you. So I'm going to hand you over to Lisa now and she'll take you through the next bit. Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Jenkins from Skills First Awards. Thanks for asking us to come along today to do this session for you. Um, as Nikki said, I'm hopefully going to be able to show you all the things you need to know in order to use our functional skills system. It is an easy to use system. Hopefully you'll agree by the end of the session. But if you have got any questions, please type them for us. Okay, here we go. Right, from the VTCT website, you will eventually be able to access our Secure Assess system. The Secure Assess system is the system that you actually do all your administration on in order to set your learners up for an exam. In the background, once you register your learners with VTCT, they will upload those learners to us at Skills First and we will then put them onto the Secure Assess system. So you don't need to be worried about any of that side of it. So I'm just going to log in. Oh, that's good. Okay, so you will be issued with a username and password from BTCT and you will log into the system the same way as I've just done now. You will then get to see the home page. Now on the home page, it gives you various information that we feel is necessary for you as users to be aware of. It also gives you a download button here where you can download the version that you need to sit the test or your learners will need to sit their tests. So if you click on this button here, you will be able to take them through the stages of how to put the icon onto your desktop or your laptop so that learners can then sit the test and I'll show you that a bit later. What I'm going to do is then just take you through these various tabs on the top and also how to schedule exams for you. The users tab is literally what it, what it says it is, it's the list of all the users. I'm logged in here now as a test user so you'll get lots of things on here that you probably won't see. However, you have your name will come up here as a user and depending on your user rights you will have either everybody within your team or just yourself as a user so it very much depends on how you've been set up as a user that's all you need to know about really on that particular tab the next tab along is the candidates tab now this tab here will show every learner that has been registered by yourselves into the system from VTCT. They will, you will see active state here. If you click over or hover over the, um, the various sections, it will give you a status of what the learner's status at that time. So you can see for the, in particular this one is retired. The rest are active, waiting to be set up for exams. Okay, so you've got the first name, last name, candidate reference number, which is the number that us at Skills First will provide. This is the list of the centres, so it will just be your particular centre that will crop up here. And then the qualifications that have been set up for those particular learners. And again, that's all you need to know about that particular tab. The next tab is the exams schedule tab. This will show you all the exams that have been set up. But it also gives you the opportunity to set up an exam for some new learners. So if you'd like to watch me take you through how to set up an exam, I'll really do that. So literally at the bottom of the screen here, you click create exam. 
It's as simple as that. Only your centre will appear here, so you just click on that and then click Next. You then click on the relevant qualification that the learners are going to be sitting. I'll just click Maths on, for instance, and again, click on that and Next. Now, this is where I think this, we've got a bit of an advantage here. We're giving you the option, and we would recommend that you don't use just the one date in this box here. I would advise you all to click multiple day exams. And what we mean by multiple day exams is, once you set the learner up here now, they will have a maximum of approximately six weeks in order to sit their exam. So should your learner not turn up or they get called out just before they're about to start their exam due to work pressures or illness or whatever reason, you don't have to cancel the exam and rebook it. As long as they sit their exam between this period and upload the results within this period, you don't need to change anything else. You don't need to change the start and end date uh, times on here because, again, it's a 24-hour window or wait a minute. And once that's been done, you click Next. OK, what we're going to do now, then, is we are going to set the learner up for the exam. This is a list of all the learners now that can sit the exams. You'll see on the right-hand side here that we do have um, some boxes that are greyed out. If you hover over those boxes, you'll see there's a reason why they're greyed out. This one is already scheduled for an exam. Um, as that one, and this one here, this particular one must have failed their exam, and there's not enough time now between them taking their original exam to taking the next exam. So there is a reason listed on each one of these. So we need to click on a learner that um, is going to be sitting the exam. So for instance, we'll pick up a February test. I don't know why I picked that one, but we'll pick on February. Now, if you want to set up more than one learner for this one test, you can do that. And they don't have to sit the exams on the same day. You can set up a batch of learners if you want to. And all you need to do is hold down your control key and click whichever learners. Okay, I'm going to deselect them because we'll just set up one. But also, if you want to select all the learners, you can click the select all in the page as well, and that will select everybody. February, was mine. Let's go back to February. Okay, and again, you just click next. Don't need to worry about this page at all, so we'll just move straight on. And here's your summary of the exam that's been set up. Just check that over and click finish. That exam is now set up. Okay. And there's where the exam is, the February test exam. Okay, hopefully that was a straightforward process and everybody would agree it is quite straightforward. Okay, what I'm going to do now is move on to the invigilation tab. What we recommend for every learner is that we set up a pin for the learner, which is this box here. Now, what we mean by a pin is it's an extra added security for the learners so that when they sit the exams, they just put the pin in as well as a key code number. And it's just, as I say, that added level of security. So we're going to highlight that by clicking the box. And you press the button that says set pin. And there's your pin which you can make a note of, but it does appear on the screen as well. If you wanted to do a whole batch of learners with the same pin, you literally hold the shift key down and you can select a whole batch and then you would put the select pin. As these have already been set, it won't let you do it, but you can literally do it like that. You can have all the learners with the same pin. So that's the learner that we've got there set up in the test. From this page as well, we can print invigilation packs, and we would suggest that you actually do this as soon as you can. What we want to do is select using selected exams, and we're going to have an attendance register, an invigilation report, and the key code slips, and it's one key code per page. Click finish, and you'll get an example of what they look like. What you can do is save them as a PDF document or actually save them onto your desktop or laptop, which is also a useful thing to have. OK, 
Okay, so this is your attendance register, and as you'll see, there's a key code that you'll need to know, and also the pin actually is highlighted on there as well for you. And then it depends on your VTCT requirements, whether you put a tick in the box or whether you get initials or get the learners to actually sign that. That's what you would have previously done with VTCT. Okay, next is the invigilation report. And we would suggest that everybody completes the invigilation report during the exam, even if nothing's happened during the exam. But also if things do happen during the exam, like there's a fire drill, the learner's taken ill, something happens, you make a record of it on this document. It's also there for you to actually show to your EVs when they come out. And finally, your exam code, key code document literally shows the key code that you will need to input to do the exam. Okay. Okay, so that's the invigilation tab, and I think, again, you'll find that's quite easy to use. Most importantly for everybody is actually seeing when you get your results, and we have a results tab to do that. Okay, now the results tab, you will be advised rather than having to go into this tab every single day to check whether the results are released, we're pleased to announce that we actually result, release results on a Monday, it's usually in the afternoon on a Monday, and everybody that is assigned as a user to our system will get sent an email which hopefully I've got an example of one here for you, which says exactly what it says there. Functional skills results for exams uploaded between, and then the dates of those exams have been released today. This was released on Monday this week, so it is a live one. And that gives you the information. So that then tells you you can actually go back into the system and look for your results. Now, obviously this page is blank at the moment. There is a default setting here that you will need to click to make sure you can get the results. And you click it onto the completed section and click the button that says filter off and apply. And the results will be shown. Obviously we've not sat an exam yet, so the results aren't there for the test that we set up earlier on. But as you can see, the results will be shown on here. You'll get to see whether they're passed or failed, the percentage of their mark and the actual mark that they've got there as well. Okay, so that's everything that we need on the results page, other than to say there is an exams breakdown that you can have a look at, and a bit later down the line, hopefully um, towards the end of September, possibly October, we're hoping to have further breakdown for each of the learners, those that have failed. That will tell you the specifics of what they've failed on. Okay, moving on to the My Profile tab then. This is where... Um, you, when you first go into the system, you might find it really useful to change your password. You'll get issued with a password that could be a bit of gobbledygook. Might actually say letters, numbers, capitals, non-capitals, etc. You can change that to whatever you want it to be. So I would suggest that everybody goes on and does that straight away. And then the final tab to look at is the Census Statistics tab, and this is where you can get Highline overview of the total of candidates, exams completed, what's scheduled currently, what's awaiting marking, etc. And those can be exported to a CSV file. And that essentially is all I need to show you about setting up an exam. Hope they found that useful. Okay, what I now need to do is show you how to download an exam so that when a learner is going to be physically sitting an exam, you can download it in advance so they don't have to actually sit it at their desk and you can actually take it out on the laptop to them and take them into a quiet room. Or unless it's in a classroom situation, you can download them up front. Okay, so in order to do that, Um, right, we've got two options that you can actually do. You can sit, the learner can sit the exam online, and if they sit the exam online, what they need to do is, I'll just come out of here a moment. 
I'm going to take you back to our Skills First website. Sorry, I'm not. I'm to take you back to the icon for This is the icon here that's on the screen where exams will be sat. And this is called Secure Clients. If you remember the C for clients as, as your candidates, that's how I remember it. So what you need to do to download the exams, you click on Secure Client and it will open up another window where you can put in your username and password or the key code for the learner. Now, what we would suggest you do is put the key code for the learner in here. And what I'm going to do there is add one that I've already got set up. So the key code I'm going to enter here. And OK. OK. And this is now confirming the details. And the learner then has, or you or the learner has to enter the PIN code that they've been given. Again, enter, and we're ready to start the exam. So that's anybody that's going to enter the exam there and then, that's as simple as it is, and they can work through the exam. The good thing about this is you will get given um, an introductory page which gives the learner all information about what they need to do and they don't need to count any of this reading time in the exam time. So that's the exam that will pop up from there. Okay. I'm actually going to finish this exam. And then I'll tell you how to do it offline. So yet again, to do it offline, We open up Secure Client again. And we click on the Show Admin button. We put in our. Sorry. So that then takes you back to the Secure Assess system. And we highlight the exam that we want to take. So we'll click on this one, for instance. And then literally, you click on the button here, which says Download Exam. And that downloads the exam that you want to take. And that gets stored onto the system for the learner to take at a later time. Bear with us a moment. Okay, so you come in from a, uh, come back to meet the learner, and the learner is actually going to sit the exam today, and you double click on the icon again, and you do exactly the same as you would do when you went and sat the exam online. And you then go through entering the key code again for the exam, which I'll just enter in the door for you. Oops. Okay, and it's downloading the exam that then has been stored onto your system. Get the learner to check the details are correct, click accept, confirm, again we enter a PIN number, enter, and again you can start the exam. Again we've got instructions here on each page which don't count into the learner's exam time. As soon as you press the start exam button, 
that's when the countdown button starts counting down. One of the things we've also got that's quite useful on here is a preferences page. So by clicking the preferences button, you'll actually get to see those levels that have got perhaps dyslexia, and actually you can change the font colours and everything, the background colours, very bright and vibrant. Just so you can see a few, so you can actually see what they look like. The only thing that doesn't change is the skills first layer, I'm afraid, but everything else will change to however it suits your learner's preferences. The default then is there. Okay. There's also a tutorial that the learners can come back to at any time, although if they use the tutorial during the exam time, it does eat into their exam time. If they use the tutorial before the exam time, obviously that's the best thing to do. Takes them through how, this takes them through how to navigate the system. And again, press start the exam. What I'll do is I'll actually take you through this exam so you can actually see an example of what one of the papers looks like. Hopefully you'll see that it's quite user-friendly, quite straightforward. Um, questions are literally always in a grey box, so you will see them there, all the information that you need. If they need to scroll down, I would always encourage you to get your learners when they're practising to use the scroll bar. Excuse me, use the scroll bar. Questions will always be separated, so if there's more than one point of the question that needs asking, it will be in a separate box. And when they show their working time, An example, the workings out they use the calculator actually come onto here as well. Um, you don't have to put the workings out here, although it does say show your working below because it will actually be recorded here unless the learners press clear, which it will obviously do. All of the questions are separated into tasks, and each of the tasks have various parts within them. So what you'll see is on this particular one there are three parts. On task two, for instance, again there's three parts. Task four, when we get there, there are six parts. So at least you know which one you're on. The arrow will indicate which question you're on within there. One of the things that's really useful is if the learners decide they can't answer that or they want to come back to it, they can actually flag the question. It will show us a flag on the area here. And when we go to finish the exam at the end, I'll show you, it will tell you a question hasn't been answered and it has been flagged and they can go back to that before they physically finish the exam. Again, throughout this exam, they can go back to the tutorial. However, the tutorial will now eat into their exam time. Okay, so let's, for instance, say we've done this last question. Okay, we've shown our workings out, we've done everything we want to do, and we decide now that we're going to finish. The finish button is on the top right-hand corner, and you click finish. So it's telling us here you've not answered all of the questions and you've flagged one or more of them. Are you sure you'd like to finish? If you don't want to, you press, press the cancel button and that will take you back to the screen. If they do want to finish, click the finish button and just in case they've done that by error, we give them another chance to say that they are definitely going to finish and we move the button, the exit button onto the right hand side. And that's the exam sat. Okay, now, if they're sitting the exam live, the exams will be automatically uploaded. If they're sitting them offline and you're not in a Wi-Fi enabled area, what you will need to do is, once you then go into a Wi-Fi enabled area, you just literally need to double click the icon again and it will literally update and send the exams through for marking. You can put the key code in again, but it won't accept it, and it will literally just automatically send the exams through for marking. If you want to check whether they've been uploaded, the way to do that then is to go back onto the admin side, click on the exam schedule. Sorry, it's on the origination tab, sorry. 
and you will see where it's got a click, uh, sorry, a tick mark on here. The actual tick mark indicates that has been uploaded and finished. If it hasn't got a tick, you'll know there's a reason that it needs to be uploaded. Okay, that's about everything I think we need to tell you about the exams and how the actual system is set up. So I'm sure you can see it's a fairly straightforward system. I'm just going to pause for a couple of minutes now in case any of you've got any questions. If you want to type them in, or again, as I said at the beginning, if there's any um, ideas of any further training or workshops or webinars that you think you might need, um, if you want to just type those in now, we'll give you a couple of minutes pause, and then anything that you feel you want or need to ask, and we can answer those while Lisa's is here. Um, and then failing that, we'll, uh, we'll sign off. Just as with every pro uh, webinar that we do, this will then turn into a podcast and it will sit on our website so you can look at it at any time and revisit it. Um, all of the instructions and all of the documentations will be on our website. We have a um, functional skills dedicated page with all of these instructions and all of the documentation that you can uh, refer back to at any time once the system goes live. I know that customer support are sending out some letters with some training materials for you over the next day or so you'll be receiving those and there'll be lots and lots of communication from us to support you through this process. Um, so uh, when does the system go live? Uh, that's the 17th of August isn't it? Yes, so the last opportunity to take an exam through the current VTCT system will be the 15th of August. And then obviously we'll switch over to the Skills First system on the 17th of August, but you will be getting lots of communication about how and when that's going to occur. Are you still able to sit paper-based exams? Yes, you are able to sit paper-based exams. You'll have to put your requests through to VTCT as normal, but obviously with the government agenda to move everything to online, it's something that we strongly encourage all our centres to do. Yeah, there, is, there will be some um, instructions and there is a calendar on the website with dates for paper-based exams, so we do accommodate that, but as Lisa says, due to the FELTAG review, it is strongly encouraged with the e-papers, but there is the facility to sit paper-based. Obviously, with that, the results are not processed as quickly because there is time needed to transit papers around the country as with our current functional skills exam. However, the calendar itself will actually tell you the dates of those results released for paper-based as well. So at least you've got an indication of what to work with the results released. How do we get the secure client on our desktop? Right, okay. As I mentioned right at the start, and I'll take you back to it. On the home page, once you log into Secure Assess, there is a button that you can click here. And literally, you click that button and it will tell, take you through a process you just need to follow. Failing that, on our website at Skills First and also on the VTCT website, there will be a user guide. And the user guide will give you complete instructions and also the technical specifications required in order to get the system onto your laptops or desktops. Uh, is it 30 days before students can resubmit? It's 30 days from the date of the upload of the exam or on paper based from the date they physically sat the exam. What we have to do is prove to Ofqual that the learner has had additional training and support if they have failed in order to make them ready to sit the exam again. Just checking to see if there are any questions coming through. So our operating system is Google Chrome, will we need a Windows program? What you'll have to do is go through the technical specifications on our um, secure assess guidance notes. Any queries that you've got that are not covered on there, if you speak to your contact at VTCT or contact us at Skills First, we do have a technical support team back in the office and any technical support that you need on a day-to-day -day basis, um, by all means give us a call on 0121 270 5100. A few questions here about um, how they get their, their staff logins. Right, the logins will come from VTCT, so you need to indicate to VTCT that you are wanting to have certain members of staff and the permissions that you want them to have to use the system. 
They will then pass those on to us and we'll get you all set up onto the system. Uh, so if sitting an online exam with a Wi-Fi connection is lost, will it work? Will this by the learner be saved automatically? Yes. And, and will the learner <laughs> log back in yes. once the connection has been restored? Absolutely. Yes, very much so. If by any chance something happens that you can't log back in, give us a ring on that number I gave you, 0121-278-5100, and the guys can remote into your machines and see what's going on with your permission. To make sure the, the learner stays in the Absolutely, exam yes, the, the learner must stay in exam conditions. And that's the same with any of the online exams that you sit either with ourselves or Skills First. We can always sort it out for you. So maintain your invigilation situation and we will always get you restarted. And it's far better for the learner to continue with the test that they're currently on with rather than to start a whole new test. So wherever possible, maintain your invigilation and between us, we'll get you back online and everything will have been saved up to that point. Uh, is there sample papers for students to sit before the actual exam? Yes, there are. We have them through our website at Skills First. You can click Qualifications and then click Functional Skills. They're on there, but they should also be available through the BT Civics Centre uh, website. Sorry, once they become live as well with our Functional Skills offering. Uh, what is the notice to book exams? Can we book, book them on the day of the exam? Absolutely, yes. Once you've registered your learners with BT Civics. Um, the transfers, on, I understand, will happen overnight. Um, once those learners have come through to us, you can sit them then the, the same day if necessary. Yeah. So once you've registered the learners, we can then book them in. I will check the system, make sure the learners are on there. If there's an issue, just give us a ring or speak to me too soon. As with all of our systems, you always need to leave a 24 hour window once you've registered your learner before you can schedule them for any exam just because of the processing. All of our processing pulls through overnight, so your learners will then be sat there when they've been successfully registered the next day onto the qualification. There on after you can schedule an exam at any point. Uh, so, um, so I said that they used the same system before and it was it was unreliable. Um, I, I guess probably with a different warning organisation. Um, so how, how does yours differ? Uh, it's reliable. <laughs> we we have we we get very very um, few calls from centres that say it's unreliable. It would normally be down to the system that you're operating from. Um, but if you've got any queries whatsoever, please give us a ring because that's not sort of something that I've actually heard before. We do run slightly different to a couple of other awarding organisations that use the same platform. As is slightly different, um, but it, it is, is reliable. I would say, you know, go on the system and use it. And if you have any issues, just give us a call and we'll sort them out for you. Very much so. Uh, how many times can students sit an exam with your parents? As many as times as they want. Obviously, with the 30 days in between, but they can keep going until they get it right. And what is the turnaround time? More okay, the, um, I'll just show you on the screen again. We have a KPI of 20 working days. However, at the moment we're averaging about 8 to 10 days. You'll see this one. This came out on Monday this week, which I think was the 13th. Um, and these are, this is the results between the 29th of June and the 5th of July. These came out this week on Monday, as I mentioned. But KPI, 20 working days. Other than the paper-based tests, obviously, which follow the calendar, which you can get on the website, and obviously the, the paper-based tests do take slightly longer due to the transit of paper and marking. Are the papers different, uh, different ones to the ones used by SQA? Yes, absolutely. We have our own set of exam papers. Absolutely. I don't think there's any link to SQA. No, we have no links whatsoever. No. In fact, SQA are no longer on their own functional skills. Yeah. Uh, do the practice tests save so we can provide feedback and marking? Well, we don't actually mark the practice tests for you. What we do is you can print them off or use them online. However, we also provide you with the marking scheme so you can mark questions yourself. If you wanted us to mark them, there would obviously be a cost incurred to both BCCC and to us as awarding bodies. So we'll provide you with the marking scheme. 
which personally, with my trainer's hat on, I think it's a good idea because we can actually see where the marks are allocated and you know what emphasis to put on certain questions, etc. I think the emphasis now is on clarity and making sure that you understand our systems and processes as fully as possible and that's why we always now release mark schemes. You can see the way in which our examiners mark the papers and you'll be able to then you know, educate your learners on how to sit exam papers effectively and get the best out of the tests for them. I think it's also useful to mention as well that if we have got any learners who are borderline failed we will actually remark the paper before the fail result comes out live. So it is, if it is a fail, it's a genuine fail, it's not a borderline fail. It has been remarked in advance before it goes onto the system for the result. Uh, what is the upload window time uh, once a learner has sat an exam and it's offline? Yeah, if it's offline, we would suggest that you do it as soon as practical straight after the exam. I mean, if, you, if you're out in the sticks and you're not going to get to a Wi-Fi enabled area for the next day, that's fine. What you've got to remember is, though, to, to actually upload it because there are instances that we have where, you know, a centre might phone us up and say to us, we haven't had the results released today. We sat the exam three weeks ago. I said, well, you haven't uploaded the exam. So you must remember to upload that exam at the best, at the, you know, the most practical time possible after the exam. Uh, can the exam be loaded off a flash drive to enable the exam to be taken on a computer which does not have Wi-Fi? It's not suggested that you do that. However, what we would say is if the computer doesn't have Wi-Fi, you actually um, download the exam onto the laptop and then speak to our tech guys who will help support the upload of that exam afterwards. Uh, if a learner required extra time, how do we apply for this? You would do that through the normal reasonable adjustment straight through the TCT. Yes, so as with everything else, you've got your automatically endowed and then your additional that you need to apply for. So again, if you just go through our website and into the additional support requirements, then all the instructions are there for you. If you need any help, then just give us a call and the customer support team can talk you through. Uh, so are there any mock exams that simulate the actual exam? The mark exams are the practice papers that we actually have on our website that you will have links to, to from the BTCT website, yeah. Um, it's a lot of questions today. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, I've got someone else, I'm not sure, perhaps they didn't um, went around when it was asked before, but just saying it. They're saying an online exam and the connection is lost, will yeah. the work be saved? The work does automatically get saved, absolutely. But if you do have any problems during the physical exam, the taking of the exam, please phone our technical support team who can remote into your computers with your permission and they can actually sort that out for you. I think that's it now. There's no more questions. Oh, one more. Uh, oh, one more. Um, if you've got any more, if you want to just type them in now, because we are going to uh, finish the webinar, so I think we've had most of the questions through. So. It's uh, the ICT exam paper. No, it's online. <laughs> Do we remember that? Yeah. <laughs> This is one of the only systems that has an online ICT exam, but do remember with your ICT exam that you do have to have part of the exam has connectivity on the internet and part of it doesn't, so you've got to be able to facilitate that. But so just be aware of that beforehand. And all the invigilation guidance regarding the ICT exam will be published on the BTCT website. Yeah, it's got its own set of documentation just so that you're aware of everything. And uh, does the ICT exam simulate words and exercise? Absolutely, so, yeah. yes, definitely. That's one thing we were very, very keen to make sure happened when we actually set up these exams, yeah. Okay. Is there any, uh, are, are there any teaching resources to accompany the qualifications? Um, there are so many teaching resources out there in the cyberspace, um, you know, at the moment, but um, we personally don't offer anything at this moment in time. However, as, a, as an awarding body, Skills First are working with another partner to actually put some um, YouTube clicks onto the system so that we can actually give some additional support that way. Um, otherwise, you'd have to use whatever BTCT suggests that you use. 
But there are yeah. so many resources there are. out there at the moment. CTCC are also currently looking at a partnership with another company to produce some resources for you and some diagnostic testing results. Um, I'm not sure when those are going to be available, but certainly not this side of Christmas, I wouldn't say. But we are looking into getting something for you to support you with that. We will, we will, as Skills First Awards, we will definitely notify BTCT as and when our YouTube clips become available so that everybody is you know, able to go and watch those and hopefully you'll have a link from the BTCT website. Okay, um, will the practice papers on the website, will they be updated at any point? Yeah, we, we're constantly putting new practice papers on the system. As exams get retired, we will actually put them onto the system. Um, as we take on new papers, etc., and we retire those, we will put them onto the system. So there will be, there's not huge amounts on there at the moment, but there will be updated and more will come onto the system as soon as we can. Uh, so I'm just asking, can we look at the exam uh, on the day of the exam? Yes. As long as the learners have been registered with VTCT in the first instance. 24 hours prior. 24 hours prior. Okay, so um, how will SLC? Okay, right. SLC is done. We have set tasks that we will issue to VTCT. They will send out to all of the US centres. And it literally is a format that you will follow. Um, the set tasks are things like health and safety, customer service, those types of things. Um, there are three tasks within each um, assignment and you will follow the process through. What we do ask is that before you carry out any um, SLC task that you um, watch our DVD, we have a standardization DVD, and we, um, BTCT will ask you to sign a declaration form to say that you've actually all watched that DVD. Uh, and it talks about how you go through the system. It's, it's quite a simple, straightforward system. Um, and then what you will need to do, once you've completed all the paperwork, you need to keep hold of that paperwork. And those, um, once the learners have achieved the SRC component, you will then need to upload the result for that onto the VTCT system, so that once the reading and writing component has also been achieved, the full certificate will then be released. Just to add to that, the letter that you should be receiving within the next day or two has got some quite explicit instructions in there. It's it's being sent tomorrow, and in there is the actual DVD that you need to just, it's a tutorial DVD that tells you how to administer your SLC, um, and all of the instructions on what to do and how to do it will be enclosed in there with a link to the website as well. You won't be able to actually claim any SLC results until you have signed the declaration to say that you can watch the tutorial video. Um, so, and again, there's instructions on what to do about that as they come through. So you will be getting the letter probably early next week. It's coming out tomorrow. Oh, and in addition to that, so um, Skills First do dictate the SLC tasks that you have to do. However, you can devise your own tasks or manipulate and, and, and change some of the tasks that um, Skills First have given you. If you want to do that, again, on the website, there is instructions on what to do and how to do it. If you want to create your own task or change one of the skills first ones, you need to go through the process, but you do need to send the information and paperwork through to us so that we can get that approved for you. And the rationale behind that is just to ensure that you're not disadvantaging your learners by giving them a task that's not going to get the best out of them and achieve the objectives for the SLC learning outcomes. So if you do want to use your own tasks, um, just go through the, the website, again, if you need any help, just give us a call, and there is a process for that, but you do need to have it ticked off by ourselves before you can move it any further forward. So what I would say is if you've got SLC plans um, around about the 17th of August, you need to be really having a look at this training DVD and getting everything signed up and sent back to us and make sure that you're comfortable and happy with everything that you need to do. Uh, if there's a problem with the exam and support have to dial in, is the candidate granted extra time? The exam would be stopped and obviously yes is the answer. <laughs> they would be able to pick up and continue, yeah. Um, is, is your system compatible with Windows 10? No. There is an instruction on the home page here. Um, and it actually says important information. 
So it does not currently support Windows 10, and we would advise everybody, we're having a lot of people saying that they're having issues with Windows 10. So it's, at the moment, it's not compatible with Windows 10. Any information that we feel is of use to you, we will always put onto the home page and that will change on a regular basis. Okay, I don't believe there are any more questions, but if you do have questions that you think about afterwards, please feel free to contact us in the exams team or in the customer support team at BTC team. We'll happily do our very best. Oh, one more question has just come through, but we will do our very best to try and answer them as soon as possible. Is it compatible with the uh, Apple Mount? Not at the moment, but there are plans eventually to get them onto tablets as well, so that that is in the pipeline, yeah. Okay, so I'd just like to say thank you for joining us on the webinar. If you do think anything, like I say, after today, um, just give us a shout and we can get that sorted for you. Um, we do wish you every success moving forward with the new system and we hope it is an improvement for you. Um, thank you for dialing in today. Good luck and... Thank you for being here, okay?